from you are all things to you are all things. We give you glory today. We give you glory today. We thank you for life flowing from you to us, through us. Thank you. Thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. You may be seated this morning. We thank God for his presence. Y'all do me a favor. Let's give this worship team a hand clap of appreciation. We thank the Lord for these two ladies. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. Well, I think on this Memorial Day weekend, it's proper to uh, honor those who have served in the the greatest military on the planet. If you've, if you've served in our military any time in your life where you stand, we'd love to honor you today. Okay. Thank you. Let's give these men and women a hand clap of appreciation. We thank you so much for your service. We thank you for being willing to lay your life down, put your life in situations to where it could be taken so that we could be free, so that we could grow up in a place where we could worship God freely without worrying about someone coming in and arresting us and chaining us up and throwing us in prison. Thank God because of you, we're worshiping God in a basement but not in an underground church. Come on, somebody. But it's because of you. Freedom is not free. Freedom is not for somebody paid a price. Always does for freedom. And so we thank you for paying the price so that we could be free. Jesus said in John 15 that no, there's no greater love than this than one be willing to lay his life down for another. That's what Jesus did for us. That's what love does. That's what agape love does. And that's what you all have done in action. And so we thank you and we honor you. A big God bless you to you. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for you. Father, I pray for these men and women. I just speak a blessing over them. Lord, seed reproduces after its own kind. I pray, Lord, that because they're willing to to give their life for others' freedom, Lord, I pray that you would bring freedom into every area of their life. If there's any area in their life where there's not freedom, spiritually, physically, financially, mentally, I pray that you bring that even now to them. We bless them in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Come on, let's give them another hand clap of appreciation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for freedom, Jesus. Thank you for freedom, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Well, we live in the greatest country in the world. Amen. I got, and still do, get so emotional when when I see people burning the American flag and stomping on the flag, not showing honor to the flag. This country's not perfect because it's made of imperfect people. Just like the church isn't perfect because it's made of imperfect people. But we live in the greatest country in the world and it's afforded us opportunities and blessings that other people don't have that are born in other countries. Amen. You just, you just, you just take some trips. I, I never saw poverty and poor until I went to Bulgaria at 17 years old. And I saw people living in huts and dirt floors and using bathrooms and outhouses and children starving. I come home thanking my mom and dad for a roof over my head and got in the shower. I remember the first shower I took when I got back, just crying, 17 years old, thanking God for running water. You never realize how blessed you are until you go somewhere and you don't, and, and you don't have that. We see someone living without it. Just take things for granted. In this generation, I, I see it to where people my age and younger take so much for granted. Try to tear down and, and destroy 
a country and, and people who afforded them so many opportunities and if they would just open their eyes and look, there's opportunities all over the place for them to go after and accomplish their dream. Amen. And listen, it was not easy. Nothing's ever easy. Nothing comes easy. You may have to work a little harder, you may, but it's there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, let's turn it to uh, uh, Matthew 25, verse 45. And we're going to be reading through 51. Now, now I was planning on continuing our, our, our faith series, Choose Faith. But, but the Holy Spirit has had this passage of Scripture. One moment. <laughs> Still on it. Well, hurry up, serious. It's Matthew 25, okay? Excuse me, Matthew 24, verse 45. We ain't got all day. People are going to the beach after this. <laughs> you got a little technology, boy. Praise God. This has been big in my spirit this week, and uh, so I was even praying earlier, and the Holy Spirit was like, don't go against the grain. Go to that passage of Scripture. I said, yes, sir. So Matthew 24, verse 45. Let's read it. It says, Sir, are you ready? Matthew 24, 45. <laughs> Who then is faithful and wise servant? Sorry, that's the wrong scripture. <laughs> Matthew 25, verse 1. Siri, got me. Matthew 25, verse 1. Hey. Now, if they do that, imagine now. These electric cars that drive themselves and you getting in there and you telling it where to go. Amen. Whoa. <laughs> you hold on. End up in Wyoming and you were trying to go to Nevada. <laughs> Matthew 25 verse 1. The Bible says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy, your, uh, buy for yourselves. Verse 10, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But the answer, but he answered and said, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Father, I pray that you would speak your word today, that you will wear me like a glove. Holy Spirit, flow through me today. I pray, God, that, that every word that is spoken We'll, we'll go and accomplish that which it sent forth to accomplish. Just as you did for Samuel, don't let any word hit the ground. But may it accomplish, may it hit the target as it's led and ordained by you. May you watch over your word to perform it as it comes out of my mouth today. And I thank you for all of us leaving out here better than what we came because of your truth, because of your presence, because of your love. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, here Jesus is, of course, given a parable 
of what the kingdom of God is like concerning uh, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That Jesus, we've heard it, I've heard it my whole life, you've probably heard it your whole life, if you grew up in church or if you've been to church any, you've probably heard somebody say, Jesus is coming again. That Jesus is coming back. And I've heard, I've, I've heard it said and I've heard people say, well, I've been hearing that my whole life and he hasn't come yet. That it's been 2,022 years since Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and ascended back to heaven. And here we are, and he hasn't come back yet. If you read a little, uh, in, in, in Matthew 24, Jesus says that no one knows the, the hour nor the day except for the Father of when the timing of his return will be. But you can rest assured that Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. And there will be a rapture, even though the, the Bible doesn't mention the term rapture, but uh, it says that the, the, the church will be caught away, that there will be a catching of a way, like the twinkling, twinkling of an eye, that quick like that. There will be, be a catching away of the church. Hallelujah. In one of Jesus' parables, he said there'll be uh, one person, there'll be two people in the garden, and one will be gone, and the other one will be left. And then he goes on to talk about other scenarios. But there's going to be a catching away very, very quickly. And the bride in Christ, the Bible says, is going to rise, and the, the dead in Christ is going to come back. Sent, they're going to be sent back to their bodies, and they're going to be resurrection from the dead. The dead in Christ will rise first, and then we'll, we'll be gathered together after that. We'll be caught up in the air to meet with Jesus in the air. Hallelujah. And, and so that event hasn't happened yet, but it can happen any moment. According to theologians and people who study on end time prophecy, if you listen to a lot of them or if you study end time prophecy, the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, you'll, you'll find that everything that needs to happen in order for Christ to return has already happened. Except for the Bible says that the gospel will be preached to, to every person. There's still people who haven't heard the gospel yet. Amen. Hallelujah. But through technology, through social media, through television, the gospel is going to remote places at a, at a, at a, a, at a, at a very uh, uh, fast pace. So Christ's return is soon. It could be any moment now. I believe that we're living in the last of the last days. And, and it's God's will that none should perish, but that all might be saved. We know that there is a heaven. The Bible speaks of a heaven. But the Bible always also speaks of a devil's hell. A hell that was prepared for Satan and his followers and his demons that was not prepared for any human being. But when Jesus comes back, or if you don't go by the rapture, if you go by way of... if you. Breathe your last breath right now and you go into eternity. You're either going to one of those two places. You're either going to heaven or to hell. And the only way to go to heaven, Jesus is the door. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And it's only those who go through Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Only those who have been born of the Spirit of God are going to make heaven their home. Hallelujah. So here Jesus, he's given several uh, parables here to prepare people for his second coming. And in Matthew 25, the beginning of it, he shares a parable of ten virgins. I believe those virgins are symbolic of the church. Ten virgins. Virgin, uh, uh, the ten virgins represents a uh, 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 purity, a form of purity, a form of godliness, a form of holiness. Hallelujah. There's ten of them. The, Jesus said five are wise and five are foolish. And the five that were wise, they had oil in their lamps. They had oil in their vessel. But from my study, anytime you see oil in the New Testament and even in the Old Testament, it's always representative and symbolic of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The anointing, the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So five were carrying the Spirit of God. And five weren't. They, they were all virgins. They all had the same outfits on. They all looked like they were heading in the same direction. But five had oil. 
and five had oil at one time, but the Bible says they had ran out. Come on, somebody. They had oil at one time, but the Bible said they had ran out, and they delayed filling back up. They slumbered and slept. We know the bridegroom's coming. But when? We've been waiting forever. We know we need to get oil in our lamps. We know we need to be ready. We know we need to be prepared to meet him. But we've got plenty of time. How many of you ever talked with someone and said, I know I need to come to church. I know I need to give my life to Jesus. I know I need to surrender to God. I know I need to serve God. But I've got time. I've been hearing about him returning my whole life. I've got time. I gotta sow my wild oats. I gotta sow into my flesh. I gotta have fun. Why can't I have fun? I only be a teenager one time in my life. Amen. They slumbered, slumbered, they're sleeping, not preparing. The Bible says that Jesus said, when I when when the Son of Man returns, he's gonna return like a thief in the night. Hallelujah. You're least expecting, or some people are least expecting it. This is symbolic of even people in the church, even the church today. The Bible says that in the last days, the church will have a, they will have a form of godliness, but they'll deny the power. You know, there, there are churches, there are mega churches, large churches that are filled with people who confess to be Christians but have no relationship with God. They come to church and they have a relationship with church, but they don't have a relationship with God. You know there's a difference. You know, you can know church and not know God. You can know, you can know all the contemporary Christian songs. You can know the hymns. You can sing it. You can wear the right clothes. Come on. You can put on the skinny jeans and the high tops. Come on, somebody. And you can look the part, but not have a relationship with God. You can, have, you can have a lamp, but it not having oil in it. Hallelujah. I know I, I, churches are filled with people who have lamps and no oil, no presence, no power, no anointing. Don't know how to walk in authority, live in defeat. Has never prayed for the sick. Has never led anyone to Jesus. That's the form of godliness and no power. Our life is to resemble that of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our life is to resemble His life and His ministry. And if it doesn't resemble that, then there may, we may have a lamp with no oil. Hallelujah. If our churches don't re- represent, or, or excuse me, if our churches don't resemble the church in the book of Acts, then we may have a, a, a church that's a lamp with no oil. Full of people but no oil. Come on. The book of Acts, praise God. They left all and follow Jesus. Come on. They healed the sick. They raised, raised the dead. They spoke in tongues. They walked in power. They walked in authority. They saw the dead live again. What does our church look like? Hallelujah. They lived as if Christ had come back any day. They were looking for His return. They were anticipating His return. If you're looking for His return, it will cause you to be prepared. If you're anticipating His return, it will cause you to be prepared. It will motivate you to read the Bible. It will motivate you to pray. It will motivate you to seek after God. It will motivate you to knock. It will motivate you to... Hallelujah. He can come back any time. Am I ready? Do I have any offense? Is there anybody I haven't forgiven? Have I did anybody wrong? Do I need to apologize? Have I did anything that, 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 that God told... Have I, is there anything undone? Have I disobeyed God in any way? Am I even looking for God's voice? He could come back today. Do I have oil in my lamp? 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, I saw a statistic, Sean uh, uh, Foyt, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He shared it, someone else shared it, and I forgot who conducted the, uh, the survey. But on that survey, it had uh, pastors, associate pastors, worship pastors, children's pastors, and, and the list went on. And then it had a percentage of those who, who have a biblical worldview. And the, and the lead pastors, it said it had like 43%. And then the associate pastors had like 20-something percent. And it just went down. It just went down. Because, let me tell you, and I've been to them. When you go to, when you go to uh, uh, some of these conferences, church planning ch- conferences, church growing conferences, that are held by some of the largest ministries and, and church planning organizations in the world, that, that some of them have churches of 20, 30, 40,000 people, and there's nothing wrong with having Jesus had, he, man, listen, he, he was a he mega church pastor. I mean, he, he couldn't even get into a city because of the people waiting on him. I mean, he, he drew a crowd. But it wasn't his color scheme on his brand board that drew him. It wasn't the marketing campaign that drew him. Come on, somebody. It wasn't him doing what man wanted him to do and figuring out what people are looking for and then changing to accommodate what people desire that drew them. It was the spirit and the anointing of God flowing through his life. That drew the people. And I've gone to some of these conferences, Avery, and they'll say, you know what? Church is like a church is like a uh, like a uh, showroom floor. Excuse me. Church is like a car dealership. If you go into a car dealership, you put the nicest vehicle on the showroom floor. You don't see anybody fixing vehicles on the showroom floor. They do that in the back. Therefore, it's the same in church. If you want to attract people, if you want to grow your church, you don't need to speak in tongues. That needs to be done in the back. Small groups in the homes. Because the unchurched may not understand. It may scare them. And they may not come back. You don't need to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, even though we believe in it. It has to be done in the back. Because people may not understand. They may not come back. Come on. That's a form of godliness but denying the power. I mean, I sat in that one conference. I was like, it sounds good, but it, it, it don't line up with what I see in here. It sounds real good, though. I mean, if I was wanting to start a Chick-fil-A, that would be awesome. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. But Jesus went into temples and he casted out demons. Jesus went into temples and he, and he, and he caused uh, 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 arms to grow out. I mean, Jesus went into temples and the kingdom of God showed up. And it set the, he set the captive free and he preached the gospel to the poor. And, and God did what he does and miracles happened. No matter who, no matter who was around. Who understood or didn't understand? Hallelujah. We don't live for God out of our minds anyway. We live for God out of our hearts. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But there were five wise virgins who were prepared, who were ready, who who had things in order. Let me ask you something today. Do you have your house in order? Do you have your house in order? How much time do you spend... Praying together. How much time do you spend reading the Bible together as a family? Opposed to watching TV. Opposed to being on social media. Opposed to doing... If, if, if Sunday morning is the only day that you read the Bible and pray, you're in trouble. If it's the only day your children hear the Word of God, you're in trouble. 
This is a daily walk. It's a daily relationship. It's a daily talking and listening and seeking and finding. And it's a daily. And, your, and your, ki- your, ki- your children are learning from what you do. They're catching. Catching. I was, I was drinking. Uh, uh, are y'all, everybody okay? I was drinking. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody got Lily a, a, a tea set, like a stainless steel nice tea set for her birthday. So we've been drinking tea all weekend <laughs> in her bedroom, me and Lily at a little table. So we're going there and I'm sitting down drinking, drinking tea with her. And she, she made me some, she poured me some tea. I drink it. And I said, Ooh, that's so good, Lily And then she get her thing and pour me some more you know oh baby that's so good she's like mm, that's good that's good and then it, it went from tea to uh, uh, McKenna got her a wooden coffee maker like a cure and so all yesterday and last night we, sh- we were drinking coffee <laughs> she was making everybody coffee in the house and it went from hot tea to coffee and, and uh, I showed her you know she saw me, with that said, it come with like a, a wooden uh, milk and a wooden uh, cup that says sugar on it. And uh, she saw me, I took the sugar and I, I put it in my cup, you know, took the little wooden milk thing and put it in my cup. I didn't have to say anything to her. She, after she see me, saw me do that, she took the wood, wooden milk thing, put it in her cup, took the wooden, put it in her cup. She saw how I stirred it, and she started stirring her cup. Didn't, didn't have to tell her anything. She just she watched me, and she did what Daddy did. This is how we live. This is how we make coffee. I'm watching Daddy. And now, <laughs> every time after that, that she made a cup of coffee, she did it exactly the same way. Praise God. What are your children seeing from your life? What are they picking up? How do they see you respond to circumstances? And what comes out of your mouth when you get a bill in the mail? How do they see you act when some, someone's sick in the home? Do they see you run to prayer first before you run to the medicine cabinet? Nothing wrong with the medicine cabinet, but do, do they see you pray? Little Lier, when I go to lay her down at night, if, she, if her knee or her back's hurting her, she'll say, Daddy, my, my tummy hurts. Will you pray? What's that worth? Daddy, my knee hurts. Will you pray? Yeah. That's what we do. We pray. We go to God. He's our source. We carry oil. We carry oil because you might run into somebody on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday that, need, that needs the oil. And if your lamp's empty, don't ever experience Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you will stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Shumpa de la monko ya le mataye. Shinke ya le monko na mataye. I worship you, Lord. Kanta ye le monko le bantaye. Shumpa de monko le bantaye. Shete ya le monko. Shinke ya le monko ya. Shete ya le monko. It's those who are anticipating and prepared for his return that are going to get to go in. And sit at the table of God and enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb. And get to be with the bridegroom forever. It's those who are not prepared. Who do not do not have a relationship with Him. Who's living for themselves. Once that door is shut, there's, there's, there's no getting in. The wise, they, they, they come back, it was too late. The door was shut. They were doing their best to get in. Bridegroom, what did he tell them? He said, I don't know you. 
I don't know you. I pray that that's not Jesus' response to you when he comes back. Because you're so in love with him. You know him. He knows you. Your lamp is full with, filled with oil every day of your life so that you can enter on in and enjoy his presence forever in heaven. This is not a game. It's not a joke. It's a life and death. Amen. Now the Lord just spoke to me and said that there's somebody has a message in tongues. Somebody has a message in tongues. So we're going to wait on that. Go ahead and release that. And I, I believe you have a message in tongues. It needs to come out. Who has the interpretation? Go ahead and release it. I beseech you, the Lord would say, come near to me. I, I desire to fellowship with you 
I desire a relationship with you, to walk with you, to help you, to show you. Didn't I say that those who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And to take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All that you need or could possibly desire is found in a relationship with me. I love you. I long for you. Come to me. Come to me. I'll give you rest. Thank you, Father. Koda ma se ya ne ne monko, yente ya le monko ya na makanya, yete ya le monko ya ne manta, sheki ya le monko ma. Hallelujah! Victory, victory is yours. Victory is yours. San le monko ne mante, ke ya le monsonte ya le monko. Yeki ya le monko ye le manka ye le monko ye te ya le monko ya le manka. I feel every desire, and your cup will run over. Tan ye le monko de man se ki ya bonto 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 bonto. I'm the God of bountiful blessing. Kum ba de bon son bo bo ne bende bende bende. Bonda, 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 bonda. Bountiful, bountiful. Monto, bon, bountiful. Supply. Yeti, bon, 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 Take from me. Take from me. Take from me. Take from me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Worship ye and the little bone song called a reba shake ye a le bone co ye a la bansai coro roro bone song coro roro bone so coro roro bone so coro de banshe she a la monto can't tie ye le bone co ye le banso ba ye te ye le bone co ma hallelujah hallelujah. Come on, will you just lift your hands and receive of the Spirit of God today? And God has a, a uh, wants to bring a refreshing to somebody today. You know, the first thing that in Acts 2, when the Spirit of God came upon the 120 believers, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. There was joy. There was joy. People thought they were drunk. There was joy. Every care was was just broken off and every heavy weight and burden was lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Let's just worship God in your own way. If you have your prayer language, pray in the Spirit. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Let God fill your, your lamp, fill your vessel. It says, will for us to be filled with the Spirit, not be drunk with wine. <clears throat> Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Stir yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in the Spirit. Shake a lemon, call a bounce. Call a lady, did it, 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 did it
Come on, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Let the river of God flow through you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just yield, yield, yield. Let go, let God. Let go and let God. Yield. Yield. Get out of your head. Come on. Tap into the spirit. Your wisdom is in the spirit. Come on, your strength, your healing, everything's in the spirit. Just uh, show me in the spirit, parents. Um, let's uh, listen. Will you, yeah, Tom? Will you ask them to bring the children here? Lord, just show me in the spirit, parents praying over your children in this in this uh, atmosphere here.
can get all we can get all of them, the little ones and all of them. No, just with your parents, all your children. Go to your parents, or if your parents aren't here, go to whoever brought you. This is our future. The Lord told me everything that you're doing here, you do it with intention and preparation for the future. our future. The enemy's after our children, but he can't have them. That's why we're that's why we're gonna have a Christian school. You know I <laughs> you know the enemy he comes with intimidation to try to stop you from doing what God said. I had someone come to me, first time I ever met him. And uh, anyway, <laughs> I told him what we were doing, what we're going to do on the, the campus out there. And when I mentioned Christian school, he stepped back a couple feet. He said, well, we don't need another school here. I said, well, who died and made you God? And I didn't tell him that, but I was thinking that. He said, he said, we don't need another Christian school here or another school. And I said, well, that's what, you know, that's what God told us to do, so that's what we're going to do. And he said, well, he said, I just I see that as competition, and we don't, we don't need that. And before he left, he said, he said, before he left the campus out there, he said, now be thinking about that school. And when he left, I was like, no, we're going to have a Christian school. Amen. A spirit-filled Holy Ghost Christian school where our children are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and lay hands on the sick and come on. Amen. Because, you know, I had, to pro- I had to process that. And the Lord was like, no, that, that's, that's the enemy coming in with intimidation. You do what I tell you to do. But these children here are our future. Come here, baby. Come on. I want you, you family, lay hands on your children right now. As Logan leads us, uh, sing something over us. I want you to pray over your children. As the Lord leads, lay hands on them. Pray for the future. Pray for the future spouses of the Lord tarries. Pray over their destinies. to 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your gifts, your talents. Lord God, coming out of them at the right time. We thank you for them knowing you from a young age. We thank you for your spirit upon their life. Even now, for putting your, your spirit upon their life. We declare that they will fulfill your destiny and plan for their life. And the devil will not uh, 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 stop it. Will not cut it short. We thank you for protecting them from the wrong people. From the wrong relationships. But, but bringing the right people at the right time into their life. We thank you for blessing them and making them a blessing. We declare that they'll never know a day of lack or bondage in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll never know a day of drug addiction. They'll never know a day of poverty. They'll never know a day of depression. Come on. They'll not be bound by fear, but they'll be strong and courageous, filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you will use their voice in their generation for your glory. That they will prophesy. Hallelujah. That they will see mountains move. They will see signs and wonders follow their life. That they'll live supernatural lives that will bring you glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Now if you if you have a child that's that's maybe older, that's uh, that's a prodigal that's running from God, let's pray for them right now. Father, we declare every prodigal is coming home. We declare our son's coming home. Come on. Our daughter's coming home. Satan, take your hand off of them. They will not serve you. They will not be enslaved to you the rest of their life. But they will walk in the freedom of God and in the blessing of God. Hallelujah. They'll be used by God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. So Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Hallelujah. We thank you for freedom at Freepoint. We thank you for victory at Freepoint. We thank you. Hallelujah. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We declare our children, our children will set the captives free. Those, those, their friends in school that's depressed, that's contemplating suicide, then our children, hallelujah, will run off that tormenting devil. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that our children will lead their teachers to Jesus. Our teachers will lead their principals to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank for revival in our homes. I thank you for even now, hallelujah, revival fire is starting and burning in the name of Jesus in our hearts and in your homes. Your homes aren't going to be the same after today, hallelujah, because every idol is falling at the feet of Jesus. Come on, every idol, and God's getting your heart. God's grabbing your heart, and you're making Jesus a priority. Come on. Oh! Thank you, Jesus. I declare, our, I declare our children will be virgins when they get married. Come on. Come on. Our children will know their value. Come on. They'll know their worth from a young child. Thank you, Lord. They'll keep themselves. They'll keep themselves. The grace of God will keep them. The grace of God will keep them. The mercy of God will follow them all the days of their life. Logan, let's sing this. Let's sing this over. A thousand generations in your family, in your children, in their children, in their children. His favor be upon you. And a thousand generations in your family, in your 
children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family, your children, your children. said you guys are pillars in this community and that the Lord kept bringing back in my remembrance or my, to, in my spirit uh, talking about when he said when you pray go to your secret place and your father your, and, and, and your father will be there and then your father who sees a secret will reward you publicly and you guys have been you've been faithful for years and years and years and years and years in, in the secret behind the scenes and the Lord said he's getting ready to reward you publicly. That your faithfulness behind the scenes and your ministry and what you've done for him and people. The Lord says other people haven't seen but he's seen. But now you come in the season where the Lord's going to reward you publicly. And I don't know exactly what that looks like. But I kept hearing my spirit that the Lord was going to use you and your family to be pillars in the community and to be an example to other families of what it looks like to serve Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. That your example, God's going to use your example as a ministry for the families. Hallelujah. From the oldest to the youngest. going to use even even the children here other children children are going to look at them and say that's how I'm supposed to act you're probably thinking oh I don't know about them but no the Lord says yeah them hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah we thank you Lord we thank you for it we receive that Lord we receive that Lord we receive that Jesus we thank you for this family. Thank you for bringing them this way. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we'll learn from this family. We'll learn from this family. 
We bless them. We bless them. Thank you for the favor on their life. Thank you for the favor of God upon their lives. From generation to generation to generation. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That everything you've promised grandmother and great-grandmother. Lord, we thank you that you're doing it. Right on down the line. And you will do everything that you've promised. You will fulfill every prayer. You will give every request. We thank you for the princess. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give Jesus a big hand clap of praise for what he's doing. Spirit, praise God, and I'm hearing it while Pastor was praying. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now you got to have the righteousness of God. And all these things will be added to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Things. It's an S on things. So you won't have to worry. Praise God. He's going to add it to you. If you seek him and you seek him right, he told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call on me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. God got it for you. It's there. It's right there. I mean, hallelujah, glory to God. I, 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 I've been... 70, 78 years old, praise God, and he never failed me. Hallelujah, never failed me. Hallelujah, glory to God. When I needed money, praise God, I tell the Lord, my finances are low, and I need such and such thing. God have answered prayer, and he will answer prayer, but you got to seek God. Seek him, and you will find the thing that he uh, offered to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may see me with this neck break song, but he's coming off. I know it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. God is a healer. He has healed me. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes we go to a test, Pastor. Sometimes we go to a test. The devil don't want you to go forward. But when the devil starts messing with you, you know God is blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let, baby, come here, baby. Come here. Uh, stand, stand beside Ronan. Ronan, the Lord said, don't, don't grow weary in, in well-doing. You're going to reap if ain't not. The Lord wants to strengthen you today. To give you strength, His grace is going to be multiplied to you. Hallelujah! God's going to give you the desires of your heart. The Lord showed me a, a certain desire. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say it over the microphone. What you've been believing Him for, God's going to give it to you. And the Lord says, "Help's on the way." Help's on the way. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! May lay hands on Father in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace and multiply to her strength, strength. thank the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Renata, the Lord's bringing you into a new season. This season is going to be so good. It's going to, it's going to be hard for you to remember what season and past were like. 
the difficulties, the struggles. Because this season is going to be so good. I just keep in the spirit, I keep seeing you just laughing. A lot of joy. A lot of joy and a lot of fulfillment. Amen. Amen. Lord, let's bring you a new season. Helped on the way. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.